Okay, hello. Um, I'm Philip, and I'm going to present um, monitoring of urban densification processes. Um, first, um, the situation we are talking about is that in Germany, around the, the bigger city, cities like Berlin or Hamburg, Munich, um, you have a really strong suburbanization in the commuter belt, and these grow is rapid and mostly uncontrolled and we are talking mostly about singly family housing on smaller properties and those properties are keep getting smaller and smaller so more percentage of the properties is um, sealed and a lot of those smaller municipalities have around 10 to 20,000 inhabitants are quite big have a really low density and have a green character and with the ongoing suburbanization and the dividing of properties um, those municipalities lose this green character um, which is not or which is something that is not wanted um, and oh it's cut um, the situation is that the German building code limits the possibilities of regulations, um, especially there's the so-called paragraph uh, 40, 34, um, building in inner city areas, which more or less um, can simplify it as you have to look at your closer neighborhood and your building or a new building has to fit in in, in types and kind of usage and by size so if you have uh, around you single family housing like in the picture you can build your own house there if it's not enormously bigger than than the others and the consequence is that in Germany, you have the situation that in, the, in those smaller villages and municipalities, you have properties of up to 3,000 square meters with one house. And with the prices um, going up and the, the suburbanization process, those properties are divided by six. And you have now six houses on the same area. You have a bigger ceiling of the ground, you have more in inhabitants and with the par paragraph uh, 34 you can't really regulate that so the, the municipalities have no chance to, to stop or regulate this, this process um, or nearly no uh, possibilities. Um, so there are development plans necessary um, and in, in the German bureaucracy those are processes taking in a good case, two years, but in reality, we have development plans since 2007. They aren't finished yet because it's part of a political decision. Um, and in this time, the the problem just continues. So the the properties get divided, um, and the the suburbanization uh, keeps going. And Another problem is that the smaller municipalities are overloaded. We have like two colleagues um, who have to control that and we get like 50 um, new buildings or uh, plans for buildings a week. So it's too much work and so you can't deal with every single one. So you have to find a prioritization and identify those parts of the municipality where you can try to regulate the densification process and therefore we need data data and more data and what we get in in, in germany is um, kataster daten um, so we have for the properties we have the geometry the size and the usage and some things like tax id and so on and for the buildings, we have the geometry, size, usage, and the story if the data provider is good. In most cases, we don't have usage and story. Um, so the, the data is 
is very weak and we need to update it a little bit. Um, for example, we doesn't even have data on inhabitants per building or per, per property. Um, we have to build it ourselves. Um, and what we need, we need the average per district because um, when we when we see there there's a property divided, and then there's another property divided, we don't know how is the process spreading around the, the village or the municipality. Um, we are interested in the percentage of ceilings, so how much um, uh, ground is overbuilt by by houses because that's um, one point where we can regulate new buildings uh, by German building code. Um, we want, are interested in the number of buildings per property and how many times you can divide um, the properties because there's, um, that's a little um, spot where we can regulate outside of development plans that we can say a property has to be at least 400 or 500 square meters and if it's smaller, you can't build a house there. That's a small chance we get to regulate the densification process, but we don't have this time and uh, we have, don't have this data and we d also need the development over time because if we just get the data once a month and it's, it's not showing a process. Um, so what we can do, we can take the graphical modeler and calculate all those data we need by ourselves. Um, so that's, for example, when we get, um, we get data on inhabitants from a different data provider and the, um, it's coming as a, as a point cloud. Um, so we have to join the attributes by location, then we can get the inhabitants per property and per building and so on. Um, and we want to have the averages per district um, that we can do with like a formula like this, where you can um, put the statistic you want and uh, group it by the district ID. Um, so you can have the, the averages, so you have a better overview than just um, the data on every single um, property. Um, we um, also do the the ceiling of the ground by ourselves, if we jo uh, by joining the attributes by location, and dividing the area of the buildings on on the property uh, through the area of the property, so we get the the percentage there. Um, number of buildings is more easily. We put a centroid in each building, and count the points in those polygons, um, and to check how many times you can divide a property, we uh, take the area of the property and divide it by 500, and then a small um, excursion to German language. If we want to calculate the um, how many times you can divide a property, um, in our municipality it's called the Grundstücksteilbarkeitsdurchschnittsberechnung. Um, that was the reason I actually wanted to do my talk in, in, in German, but <laughs> um, yeah. Um, here we have um, an, an example. Um, what is shown here is the uh, ceiling of the ground. Um, I, I'm, I, I have to say um, that all those data shown in this talk is not data of a real property because the municipality I work for didn't want me to go here. So I'm here on my own expense, my own holiday, and I decided I'm not using their data. I'm not putting their name everywhere. So I created some data. Um, and that's the ceiling of the ground. Um, and then that's the ceiling on the ground a little time later, or would have been the ceiling of the ground a little time later. So we can see the, the development we see here is comparable with the real situation that over time it gets more dense, more dense, more dense. We get uh, more buildings. Um, the buildings not just multiply in numbers, but um, 10 years ago the buildings we had had been around 80 to 100 square meters each. And now we are talking about 150 to 200 square meters per building. And it's still single family housing. So it's 
a rapid grow and, and, and sealing of the ground, which is environmentally problematic and also for the for the uh, picture of the of those villages is it's not very nice. Um, and then we group it by um, this, uh, by quarters, so uh, the, the smallest section, so we can see um, where the the more problematic areas are, and we can group it by districts. It's another picture then. And so we can identify the areas where we have to focus on. And the main aspect, or one of the main aspects is the um, number of times you can divide a, a property because if you have, or if we, if we have an area where all the properties can't be divided anymore because they're already too small, then we don't have to focus there because there is no chance for densification. Um, um, so we have to focus on those areas where the properties are still big enough to divide them and we can identify it using this data. But that's still not um, showing us a progress or a, de a development. Um, we again go to the graphic modeler and compare our uh, new analytics with our older analytics. Um, and that's a simple red-green map. So it's simply basic good and bad. Um, uh, it's again, by, we link uh, the attributes by location and uh, do a difference between the old and new data. And the important thing is that the, uh, we draw or the, 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 the thematical negative data will turn red. So not if it's mathematical, negative but also we put the formula the way that if it's from the theme it's negative um, it's turn rate for example um, we calculate the new area minus the uh, older area because of, of the properties because um, we want the older area to be bigger and uh, the number of houses um, should be smaller in, or in baskets or should not grow. So we divide, uh, subtract uh, the, the number of new houses from the number of old houses because if the, if the number of new houses is bigger, then it's going to be a negative number and that's what we, what we don't want. So it's turning red. Um, we try to make it um, with the alternative of uh, case when, where we compared these um, statistics. Um, and got, got the same result with, with red and green um, areas, but then we don't have the numbers in the comparison. Um, and with, when, when we uh, calculate it with numbers, we also can check how good or bad the, the development is. Um, and again, we can do that for quarters and districts. And if we see the development over time, or the, yeah, if you see the development um, in comparison to between old and new data, we can see or we can identify uh, this district is, is, has the biggest problem because it's the only, it's completely red. And then we can focus on this district. And when we have a look at the, um, sorry, on the quarters, we can see that not everything in this district is. Um, subject to, to a bad development, but just some parts. And using this, we can identify the areas we have to prioritize to uh, create development plans to manage the densification process, process more or less. And uh, we um, have be better possibilities to manage the urban growth, or we can at least try because at the end it's a political decision. So it's a lot of discussion. It takes a lot of time. You have a lot of different opinions, and but at least we have a, the possibility. Um, um, we can also identify areas we, where we have the possibility or the need to intervene because um, in some areas, we don't need to intervene, as I said, because there is no, no chance for um, densification anymore. And what we also noticed is that if we take uh, graphical data like those maps, it's way better to convince others than if you just show them numbers. Um, so we use this two simple analyzing ways to try our best to 
manage this process, but at the end, it's a political decision, so it's a little bit out of our hands. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now it's time for some questions. Yeah, uh, just two small questions. The first thing uh, with densification, uh, do you consider building height or um, number of uh, housing units per building at all? Because it's one thing to build small uh, single family homes on the same footprint as a Gishof Wohnbauer, you know, a multi story building with uh, several apartments. And I think it's difficult to get uh, data of inhabitants per. Per lot, is this easier in Germany because there's obviously some. Um, it's complicated. Yeah, there is some considerations of privacy uh, involved. This f first thing, and the second thing, uh, you showed those little um, vector rasters, you know. The, and uh, what do you do with overlap? You know, if you have a building, you know, on one of those squares, you know, and almost half of it falls to another square, what do you do? The center of the building is where it is counted. If you tally up the statistics. Mm -hmm. Or do you cut houses and say, okay, one half inhabitant is living on the other cell or something um, like that? So what we, do you do with spill? And uh, uh, artifacts induce, uh, introduced by the way you raster the, the surface? Um, we we um, um, put the inhabitants to the centroid, so it's, it's uh, centered. And with uh, multi... Uh, um, story housing it's um, I can go way back um, the municipalities and I work for looks a little bit like this so you have just this single family housing and by uh, the building in inner city areas you have to build accordingly to size and usage um, and also to story it means also size so there's no possibility to build uh, for floor housing for more families so um, that's not something we have to to work with um, and if you want to build something like like more people in a smaller place then you have to do such a development plan which would be our aim because our, our we we, are, we do not want to limit the the growth in inhabitants, but we want to limit the ceiling of the of the ground because that's the, the that's the bigger problem. The other problem, when you have more inhabitants, you can manage. You can build more schools. You can build um, public transport, but you can't unseal the ground for environmental use. Thank you. Another question. May I ask about the limitation? Uh, it's uh, before the process of the building house starts or uh, you count it uh, when it's realized and you said no more houses here or how does it work, this um, flow? They have to, oh God, Benjamin, Antrag, uh, English? Hmm? So yeah, you have to fill in a form um, to to, uh, to uh, announce that you want to build and then you have to get a permit and in this process we can say yes or no but we have to do it according to the law and if they're fitting like if he wants to build this house um, we have no chance of saying no because it's fitting in this usage and the size and then that's where what I mean with the, the building code uh, limitates our possibilities of regulation. And the problem in, in, in Germany is then also the bureaucracy level because the final decision is not in the municipality but on the bigger area. And it's the region which decided. So we are just kindly asked. And if we say yes or no, and the region decides the other way, we just get a notice saying us, yeah, but we don't care. Thank you. Do you have another question? Uh, 
Um, I was wondering what is in, inside this field uh, statistics. You, you showed us this uh, algorithm in which you did this mean calculation. Uh, so what, what, is, what is this field statistics? What is in there? Uh, numbers. Uh, so it's... Um, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> um, um, you mean... You mean this? Um, like, like the statistic can be the ceiling of the ground uh, or the percentage of the ceiling of the ground. This can be the number of um, inhabitants. So every data we have. So you have the, the, the word statistic is just a, a placeholder for the actual statistic we use then at the, at the end. So like story area of the, uh, the housing and so on. And by, by this we can uh, build the average for the district. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, Philip, for your for your talk. <laughs>